Um, I'm excited today to introduce you to Amber Bales and Teresa Brennamer. Teresa teaches pre-K at Morrison Elementary and Amber teaches third grade there. Amber is a former Ag in the Classroom Teacher of the Year and a National Excellence in Teaching Agriculture Award winner. They both have traveled with us on Ag in the Classroom road trips in the summer and have presented at the conference in the past and they do a fabulous job. So I'm going to stop talking and turn it over to them. Great, thank you. Um, Teresa and I, we just want, want to make sure that um, we get some things across with I can ag with my eyes shut. Um, we want to also tell you that we um, work together as far as book buddies. I teach third grade and Teresa teaches pre-K and once a week we uh, partner up and we go down to her pre-K class and uh, have students read to each other and so we are able to um, use that time uh, for Ag in the Classroom lessons. So we just wanna make sure that if you are in your building and you feel like you're the only one that does it, uh, partner up with someone. It can be um, higher, a higher grade or a lower grade, but partner up and um, that way you can uh, work together and get some Ag in the Classroom lessons in. And the kids love it. They, they're so excited when reading buddies are coming. So they will love that. We also wanted to share that we um, do, uh, our FFA is very uh, interactive in our school and they do come in and we participate uh, with their activities. So they are coming into our classrooms and reading to us. And I know that day will be coming in, I think it's Read Agri Agriculture Day, I don't know the exact date, but usually in September and um, they'll come in our classrooms and read and we participate in their FFA weeks and um, different things. So we're pretty active that way. But we just wanna share some ideas um, that we uh, used this last year. It was like one of the last things that we got to do before uh, we, we closed down um, in March. So we would like to share that with you. So um, when we decided that we were going to do this during Dr. Seuss week, we, um, we wanted to show that you could pick books that you're already using in your classroom and do some attach some of the Ag in the Classroom ideas to it. Um, the first one I picked was How the Grinch Stole Christmas because that is my daughter's absolute favorite. She has Grinch everything. In fact, when we were on vacation just a couple weeks ago, she found a Max to go with her Grinch. So she was super excited for that. But some of the um, activities that I did, um, of course it wasn't Christmas, it was in March, but you could do it during Christmas time. Um, but one of the activities that we talked about in my class was using this um, resource from Ag in the Classroom. And I use this different, different times throughout the year. If you haven't seen it, this is another one they were talking about being on. And that you can use this either digitally in your classroom with your students, or you can um, request to get this a copy of this for your for the kids to use or take home. I usually use it throughout the year and then send home the copy at the end of the year. In fact, I found some in my room a while ago when I was working that I needed to send home that I didn't get to send home. So, um, but it, let me see if I can get this. Okay, so here's the, the part on the Christmas tree and it talks about how it's grown and then it'll show on the map where it's grown in Oklahoma along Route 66. So you can use that um, in different areas. Of course, I teach pre-K, Amber teaches third, but you could talk about geography to extend it or um, what, what, or talk about different things, um, using it for math, whatever you would like to do. Um, I found my notes when I was working in my room a while ago, and uh, there's also a Kahoot called Oh Christmas Tree that's on the site as well as a Christmas tree Kahoot. So um, for those older classes, um, that would be great. That one's the first one. And then the, uh, another um, resource that you can get on that's also online is this, um, the Fruits, Nuts, and Veggies Oh My. And in there, there's a game that I took the kids outside to play. Um, of course, doing um, pre-K, we talk about shapes. And so we talk about what shape the tree is. Um, and then they have to make a shape like the, 
the Christmas tree. And when the game is that um, there's four taggers and when the teacher says Christmas tree tag, they run around and tag and the only way they can get unfroze is if a present goes between their legs and so the other kids are the presents. And so it was great to get them out and up and moving um, and you know, any time during the year. Um, and there is a Christmas tree lesson that I did not include in here that's um, for grades three and four. Um, so that was another resource that's, that's available. Um, but we did make the pine cone bird feeders. Um, I have a pine tree in my yard, but I didn't have the foresight to think to save them. So I just asked parents to donate and I have a bunch. And so um, we did use the, the peanut butter and roll them in the bird seed and then put them in a baggie for them to take home. And I know the other um, session they ask about for peanut allergies and so they suggested using um, a different kind of nut butter wasn't it some like, like sunflower soy. So, soy or sunflower um, if there's allergies in your classroom so um, the kids love that and you can see a picture of from my class of them making that um, our next book that we switched to is green eggs and ham and and I, I used it then, but I al always use it at the beginning of the year whenever we're um, t talking about colors. So um, I'm gonna click on this and it'll take us to um, one of the lessons. And if you're not familiar with Ag in the Classroom or um, haven't been on the website, you can see this is what the lessons look like. And you can search by topic, you can search by um, grade level there's all different ways you can search and you can see that the standards are out here to the side and it goes from there's pre-k standards all the way up to fourth and you just pick and choose what you want you don't have to use the whole entire lesson and so I took different things out of the lesson but one of the things I did do um, I shared this information right here and then we colored a chicken and then I read this little poem that's included in there. So there's lots of different components and you just pick and choose what you need to use for your classroom to meet your standards. Another one that could, there's the clucking chicks. If it's another lesson that you can um, do and um, then there's another egg toss maths, math that um, could be tied in with chickens or eggs. There's lots of different books for chickens and eggs that you can use. And so um, just, just use it and do, just tie it in wherever you can. Oops, sorry. Okay. Um, hatching chicks. Um, the soybean board had, had a workshop a couple of years ago called Chickadoodle. And I'm not sure if they're going to be able to be doing that this year, but when you, sorry, when you get, I'm regulating here, I guess. Um, whenever um, we had, went to the workshop and they gave lots and lots of good ideas for eggs, but we also got a, an incubator and some things to go along with that. So I've hatched chicks the last two years. Um, I was going to do it last spring, didn't get to do it, but I have a friend that raises chickens, but you can, if you can't, if you don't have those resources, you can always contact your extension office and they have a program where you can get a, an incubator and some eggs to be able to hatch out in your classroom. So that's another good resource, um, your extension office um, that's in your county. Uh, you see there's another page on the Route 66 that goes with the chickens and then um, I, I've done the green scrambled eggs in my class um, with uh, doing the color green and so we made uh, I, my students brought in um, a variety of eggs in different um, color shapes sizes that kind of thing and then we used them to make omelets and then they were able to bring in um, cheese and um, I think we used green peppers and not every and some ham so we talked about where our food comes from, different vegetables, and then they put it in a Ziploc bag 
um, made it into an omelet, and then we poured it into uh, muffin tins and used our cafeteria to bake those. And then we had uh, like little omelets is what we um, brought in that day. Um, when we did green eggs and ham, um, I made little QR codes in our classroom. Um, so that way I didn't have to have a book for everyone, but they could listen to it and use it for fluency uh, with third graders. And again, that week, since we partner up with uh, Ms. Brenner's um, pre-K, then we went down there and they were able to read the books with them at the end of the week. But that's another way doing uh, virtual. Um, you could send the QR codes or of course go on YouTube and I'm sure you could find a, where it's read to them. And another exper uh, experiment you can do in your class is the naked egg experiment. Um, that was something I saw at the Chickadoodle workshop and um, the kids love observing this and you get an egg and you put it in a cup of vinegar and you leave it out. You can, I had, didn't even have a, a thing that, to put it in this year and so I, that, there's my picture. I just put a lid on top of it um, and so it eats the enamel off of the egg, the shell off the egg, and so you can do all kinds of things with that. Um, I found on my notes while I was looking that there is a, a chicken kahoot. There's some other lessons that go along with um, eggs that go up to even sixth grade, six, and then there was one six through eight. And of course, we always do the chicken dance in my class when we <laughs> do um, anything to do with eggs or chickens. So. That sounds like a fun one. Um, we've done some different egg things. Uh, another one is, um, I always like when we did this story or any time around, I would just get the plastic eggs in my class and maybe have a, a review or some type of game in a plastic egg and just kind of getting in that vocabulary and different things with them in the class is always a lot of fun. Um, we did um, a little bit of egg diversity. So like I said, um, around here we're a rural school. Um, people um, raise chickens and we were able to come up with a variety of uh, different eggs um, from small banty eggs to regular eggs and some larger ones, colors, that kind of thing. And so we brought those in and I used it with the I have a dream um, to where everyone um, would be treated equally no matter the color of their skin. So kind of taking that with the eggshell and then they were able to open up the eggs and look to see that they were really alike on the inside, just the outside was um, different. And so this is um, one of my writings that we had um, we used this year and I really enjoyed this lesson. Um, it was a lot of fun um, getting, getting that conversation with third graders. Um, when you, I think when Audrey or her team or when the coordinators send out the packets at the end, I have made this as an attachment and um, you're able to get that um, paper um, so that you can use it. But it was a really um, neat activity and they really um, enjoyed it, just comparing eggs to people and also just comparing eggs themselves from the different um, types of eggs that were brought in. Yeah, I'm gonna give a shout out to the ladies who did uh, theirs on eggs the other day, last week on Tuesday. They have a lot of great activities too that you could tie into. So when the packets are sent out or the, the presentations, check theirs out if you didn't get to watch it last Tuesday. Another one um, that was real easy for our science is just the simple baking soda and vinegar reaction. And they were able to use the plastic eggs and kind of do that one themselves. So it's pretty self-explanatory, but they like seeing the fizzes and the chemical reactions. And um, so third graders really enjoy that one. And it's one that I can kind of let them, you know, kind of do an experiment and have the hands on um, by themselves. Um, do we have any questions up to this point? It looks like they are um, being answered. So just a reminder for the soybean board, it's called Cool Beans on Facebook. Um, good shout out, the session that they were mentioning is Michelle Spurgeon and Sharon Banks, Excellent Eggs. And so we'll send that out. And everyone's saying they love hatching eggs <laughs> and they are enjoying the session so far. And I don't see any um, questions to answer, just Perfect. comments. All right, thank you so much. 
Um, another one I think I put in the packet at the very end was um, just a little writing uh, for third graders. It was, I would eat blank eggs and ham in a, with a, so using those prepositional phrases. So another good little writing activity. I'm pretty sure I put it in the packet that will go at the end, but just a little bit of writing for third graders um, with prepositions. And this was an activity that I uh, saw on uh, Facebook, I'm sure, and I decided this, this would go right along with what we're doing. And it's a STEM activity where the students fill up the plastic eggs with the objects on the side, and then they decide if they're going to sink or float. In my class, we would probably do it whole group, but you, in the other grades where they can actually do some writing, um, here's an example of uh, they would make predictions on whether they thought that things would sink or float uh, with whatever they put in the eggs and then um, see if their uh, predictions were correct. And before we go into this one, um, we, we, did, we did most of the books the same, but the trees is what she did. And I've got another one at the end that I did, but there are many other ones and we'll show a few more at the end, but this one we both did and we had a really good time. Oh yes. Uh, Mr. Brown can move uh, was my son's favorite when we when he was growing up and so um, I wanted to include this one and an activity that we always do uh, when we're talking about cows not necessarily if Mr. Brown can move but I did it when I did cows earlier in the year is the street cows and so I'm going to show a little short video about the street cows if you're not familiar with those.
we always watch the video and we also talk about different communities that maybe they've seen different things around uh, throughout the state or even across the country if they've traveled anywhere. We uh, talk about the penguins in Tulsa, the, the buffalo in Oklahoma City. Um, I know Stillwater has the bu butterflies that I've seen around. So different communities are, have used this same concept. But there's a lesson about street cows and we always decorate our street cows and we hang them up in the classroom. Um, another thing that we talk about is the difference between beef or dairy and that there's another lesson on here that goes along with that. And I'm gonna show that you can see there's pre-K is not on there, but I've adapted it to use it how I want to use it in my classroom. And um, there is a little books in this lesson that I let the kids make uh, with the different kinds of dairy cows and, um, and then the beef cows. Um, another, I'm gonna give another shout out to if you, if it's a, available this year is the Southwest Dairy to have their um, truck come. Um, Susie Reese is who does that. And so that's a great thing for them to come and uh, show at your class, at your school if, if, if it's going to be, if we're going to be able to do things like that this year, but we'll see. And yeah. I just want to say, Susie has been doing the sessions this summer at daycares and other places. So I believe right now, as long as your school allows it, she'll be able to. So be sure to check that out. Yes, she's came to Morrison a couple of times and we sure enjoy it every time that she um, comes. Um, another one, I'll let Teresa continue and then I think my slide's up next. Um, this, you can see that this was what we did in our classroom, the beautiful bovines, and it was comparing um, cows and people, and you can see that they, they gave, it, gave me some things, and I put it in there uh, using the Venn diagram, so that was, uh, that was fun. Of course, that got some silly things on there, too, but um, for just to get that concept into their head about doing things, so. And then the story of, story of milk and say cheese, that's an Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom um, lesson, so you can um, use that as well. Um, I use, this book is awesome for onomatopoeia, and try, it would, March was a great time to review for third grade uh, figurative language, so we would take an onomatopoeia from the book and they would illustrate it, and we had a really good time. It's great for review. Um, we also have made butter. We've made butter in our classroom. We've also made butter with Miss Brenner's pre-Kers, and real easy um, one to do. It uh, doesn't take a lot of time and the shaking and that kind of thing. And then the ice cream in a bag. We've done that one as well. We just didn't get to do that this year because we kind of do that one towards the end of the year. Um, so we didn't have to clean up much mess this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always a messy one. <laughs> yes. So we, um, the recipe is on there as well. We utilize the um, recipes a lot on the Agony Classroom website. So please um, take, um, you know, take time to look at the recipes and they're pretty easy. It sets it up um, four per um, group. Um, we usually do, we paired them up. Usually we just do two and do it in the court, but that is one there that you can um, use as well. Um, so we've done both of those recipes. So don't be afraid to, to cook in your classroom or to partner up with a grade level and do it as well. I think this is a part, um, Amber and I were talking about before, uh, the Port Council grant. Um, this is a perfect thing. You can um, write your grants and try to get things to do some more cooking in your classroom. Uh, these don't actually use cooking, but you, there are some that do. Um, so that's a great resource for you if you don't have the things in your classroom to write those grants. And with third grade, with the cooking, we utilize a lot of the fractions and talk about those, um, those things. So it works out really well for us. Okay, this one was a really fun one to use. Um, 10 apples up on top. Um, again, Ag in the Classroom lessons that you can refer back to as an apple a day and how to pick the best. So um, utilize the, the website and then we just kind of took some things that we liked and then we added some different things with it. Yes, because I use this uh during when I was talking about letter A with apples and doing a lot of different activities with that. And so it would be a perfect tie in for, you don't have to just do it during Dr. Seuss right. week. We you can, can do it throughout the year. Yeah. And then again, uh, with um, Johnny Appleseed, I know that's a big one in first grade, so you can use that there too. But this one was just another tie in that we could do some more things with um, Dr. Seuss week. 
um, the STEM project. Um, it's 10 apples up on top, but I did potato towers instead of apples because I, they were potatoes, a five pound bag of potatoes is a lot cheaper than apples and I couldn't stand throwing apples away in the trash. So we just used potato cubes and I cubed them up for the, um, for the um, students prior to getting started and then just toothpicks and then it was trying to see who could get the tallest tower and that kind of thing. So that was a lot of fun. So I just used potatoes instead of the apples for that. Um, another one with 10 apples up on top. I utilized it with the review game for types of sentences called Four Corners. And really I just put um, declarative, exclamatory, interrogative and imperative on just a little note card or paper. And I place that in four areas of my classroom. And then as I'm reading the book, then it'll say, can you? And then I would want them to go to the um, interrogative. Um, that was a question sentence. So I'd want them to go to that. Or if it was exclamatory, um, look, but see, I would want them to go to the exclamatory. So again, we just utilized, um, I utilized this book as a review. It was March, it was getting, I was thinking we were going to do our state test, but um, we just reviewed the types of sentences with four corners and it was a great way to incorporate that in. We also um, brought in apples, um, the variety of apples. They're never too um, old. I know they probably do that in pre-K and kindergarten, but we went ahead and did that again this year, bringing in some different varieties and doing the taste test and, and that kind of thing just for fun. And again, just getting that vocabulary, where your food comes from, the different varieties, the shapes, the taste, those kind of things. And here are some more pictures of our uh, towers. Um, again, and maybe you've utilized something other than potatoes or apples, but um, it was really a fun to kind of incorporate that um, with um, 10 apples up on top. Another one that I used um, was there's a Wocket in my pocket and we used fresh from the farm, uh, from the ground and all around and your food dollars and cents. And the reason why I kind of like, I like the pocket aspect. Um, I came up with um, some different games and I used the pocket shape um, with that. So we utilized that. Um, the dollars and cents um, we utilized um, advertisements for produce and vegetables um, and fruits and kind of added or um, you bought some apples and you subtracted it from ten dollars you know and how much change so we utilized um, those kind of things um, with that and rhyming and so I really enjoyed um, this one and again we did it on a QR code and, and those kind of things. Um, there was, um, I think I talked about the review coins, and then there's a poem, a worm in my pocket, I utilize for fluency in a poetry review. Um, when you get your packet at the end or when they upload or that kind of thing, I gave you the uh, poem and I also gave you the review that went with it. Again, and I gave you the pocket little symbols, but I just did all kinds of um, monies, um, suffixes, but I just utilized the pockets and just utilize the book and then put some different um, agriculture ones in there as well. All right, I think that's the end of our slide. So we'll go back to um, just us and we have um, any questions so far? We're checking. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's no, see. No questions, but people are um, really loving all of the resources that you're sharing, and they're just making sure that we're going to send them to you, and, and we are. So. Okay. Um, we have just some other books. Um, it, it, you know, it's kind of hard to set up this presentation without that interaction in the, um, or activity time. So we just have a few other, well, not really a few, but we have quite a few other ideas and some other books that we've utilized. So we just would like to kind of share those now. Um, there was a, a veterinarian that lived in Cushing, which is close to us. And so she, her first book was Rosie the Pig. And so I got in, 
got in contact with her because she got my family raises show pigs and so she got the original Rosie from our farm and so she had started doing school uh, visits and so to share her books and so she has at now moved to a different community and I can't think what it, Holdenville I think and so um, she has had three books the last three years she started out with Rosie the pig and then Pistol the horse and then Rowdy the dog and she's come and visited our school and she has a new book coming out uh, Maud the cow and um, I haven't seen it yet but hopefully hopefully she'll get to come and uh, share that because the kids always love um, having her come and and they're they're uh, they have a lot of great vocabulary in them talking about the veteran veterinarian and the thing things that she uses and things and so uh, my pre-k loves it all the way up through third right. so she, any any grade level they will love those and we like that too because it's not just the animals that's the occupation you know what can you do with agriculture or that kind of thing other than you know we think of farming and that kind of thing and that's great but it also gave an, a, another um, occupation or something that you could do with that um, I'm seeing one that says author where available um, we can um, I think Audrey, we can get Audrey the link or Audrey may have it, but we can get that information to you. Her name is uh, Rebecca Hartfield, H-A-R-T-F-I-E-L-D. And um, if you if you search that, you should be able to find it. Or the, the first book was Rosie the Pig. So you, um, I think you should be able to find it that way. It's called- I'm hey, the... no, sorry. <laughs> you can finish, go ahead. No, you're fine. I was just gonna say um, the series is called um, the veterinarian book series. And it's a little bit off topic, but you could either come back to it at the end or take a break and answer it now. But basically we had a question, how did y'all get into teaching ag in the classroom? Like how did that kind of start? So you could either do it now or come back to it. It's up to you. We can do it now. Yeah, we can do it now. Um, well, well, Teresa, I'll let her talk first. Well, I, I can, I've been doing it as long as I've been teaching pretty much because the first thing I went to was at OSU a long time ago. And so um, I've just, every time there's a road trip or any kind of workshop, I've signed up because it's, it's always fun and it's a great way to meet people that are also doing ag in the classroom. And I, I have a farm background. I grew up on a dairy. My family raises show pigs and um, so I, it's just a no-brainer for me. I include ag in my personal experiences in my teaching all the time. So it just was a perfect fit. And um, Teresa, she, we're, so we're kind of opposite. I lived in rural communities, but did not grow up on a farm. So it's been kind of all new to me. I've had some like uh, funny, embarrassing moments because of different things because I didn't know. But anyway, I kind of got into it a little more, I guess, when... Um, Audrey came and she taught at our school and um, kind of got into it a little more. But I think Teresa and I went to the first one. I think it was in like the summer of 2000 at mm -hmm. OSU. And so it's just kind of grown from there. But now we just love it. And um, the, the students really buy in and they like it and they enjoy it. And they like the cooking. They like the different things that we bring in. And um, so again, since we're rural, then it really kind of lends itself for their background experiences and then we add to them because some have backgrounds with it and some do not and so it's just been um, really fun um, to do that and then I just had the goal I wanted to be the state um, teacher of the year so it took me a couple of tries to to get that and um, then I've just continued on um, I, I just really enjoy it um, some other of our favorites um, that we like um, I've done this one in the past and I think I put this on was a, a video in May with Cinco de Mayo, but it's the Big Moon Tortilla. And I sent that out virtually. I sent the recipe for the tortillas in a bag and I actually had students that made that. And so that was a lot of fun. That's a good one. Um, with that one um, is a new book that uh, my daughter happened to share with me. And so I ordered it. Um, off Amazon and it's called fry bread. So again, it talks about you're getting some culture um, in um, and it talks about it's a nation, it's a food, it's in the US. So you're talking about a lot of um, 
you know, uh, Native American um, in it, so some culture. So I enjoy that one. And I'm gonna, um, in fact, um, Teresa asked me if she could use this one because it's very good for visualization in the lower elementary. It's very good. It, it talks about um, fry bread as a sound and it's a smell and it's a color. So that one um, is a really good one that I um, can't wait to add into my um, unit when I talk about the tortillas and we make those fry bread. I was thinking you could, you know, have someone in your community come and make fry bread. Um, I bet some have, you know, I have some that probably have had it and some have not. So that was another um, one that I want to use. Um, my, I guess my classroom again for three years is going to be llamas because students keep bringing me llamas and teachers keep bringing me llama things. And then my daughter went on the, um, the road trip this year and reminded me about the alpacas. So I have this one, it's Maca the alpaca. And so I'm gonna start the school year with this one. And it is um, about, um, it'll talk a little bit about smarts and kindness over bullying. So I want to use that, use that one at the beginning of the um, school year. So again, uh, Maca the alpaca is one I wanna use. Um, then, um, I can probably add this one into um, the egg unit, the good egg, and I think there's the bad seed. There's quite a lot of those. So again, using those. Um, I think Teresa and I both use them a lot in the classroom as our mentor texts or read alouds. And that's one way we kind of can um, get those in. I also um, have uh, my favorite book. I didn't get the copy of it out. But in my journeys, Basil, um, we used to have stone soup, but it's not in there anymore. And my basil now is tops and bottoms. So that's a good one, but I still like to do stone soup. And there's the Oklahoma stone soup recipe. And we do make that one every year along with cornbread. Um, so we do that one a lot. And then another one I shared, I think it was on my little video in May, was um, Dragon's Love Tacos. And another way to utilize um, where your food comes from, uh, farmers markets, a lot of people ra raise gardens this year. So when they're tacos, we, you could add the tomatoes, the lettuce, the cheese, the onions, whatever you know you wanted to add that. But again, you're utilizing and talking about that vocabulary and that language of where it comes from and that kind of stuff. So again, that one's a good one too. And I know Teresa has a few more that she utilizes in her classroom as well. Well, I had another thing I was going to share with the Dr. Seuss. Um, this is something I got this summer, and it's activity dice, and it goes along with Dr. Seuss. And I got it at Target at the spot. They always have a lot of uh, good Dr. Seuss things, and this could is would be a good thing to use for transitions or if you have just a little downtime. And it has um, the different characters from the Dr. Seuss uh, has. Or they're all from the cat in the hat, I think. Um, and then it's, so you roll the dice and it's got the character and then it tells you toe touches, run in place, jumping frog, spin in a circle, and I don't know what the other two say. And then it's got the numbers on there. So it tell you to do those things that many times. And so I thought the kids would like this. And like I said, there's some of the pictures that you saw, the, the picture, um, different quotes and things. All that stuff came from the spot. Um, it's my, my favorite place to go to get stuff for my classroom because it's cheap. <laughs> and I just had another thought um, about us getting started and doing things. We borrow. I mean, like I'll go to a workshop and I'll see something and I utilize it. We didn't start out like this. I mean, it, it's work in progress and we, I feel like I have gotten better and added more each year. So even don't get discouraged, just pick one thing this year, um, pick one topic. If you, you know, we, you could do a week or if you wanted to do one thing a month, just take one thing. And then over time, don't be overwhelmed with it. Then over time, just add more and more. We've taught together a long time. We've both been at Morrison about 25 years. So we've just added and added and added to it, but start small and just pick um, maybe one um, component that you like, or, you know, did, is your background in um, animals or is it in the um, vegetables or, you know, pick something that you like and then you can add to it. Don't feel so overwhelmed with it. Um, this year, um, about the time we were leaving, I had planted an herb garden in my class and we put them in cans. We had cilantro, basil um, in there, and then I took it, had to take, come up here, grab it, take it all home, take care of it, that kind of thing. 
Well, in um, Walmart the other day, I found a um, canning, in the canning jar aisle, it, it's a ball herb growing kit and it's self-watering for hassle-free indoor gardening. So I thought that might be something that I could utilize and start that from day one, but it, it would grow, um, I think it has basil, cilantro, and mint. So um, I think about, you know, utilizing that. And where I was going with my herb garden was then we were gonna put it in butters because, or like make our butter and then add our cilantro or basil in the butters because it's an easy something to make. And then you could, we've put it on crackers in pre-K before or a piece of bread that that's not too um, hard to do. So we were going to, that's why I had the herb garden, but um, that was, I took it all home and you know, a lot of stuff. So I think I'm gonna try the watering system this time and see if we can't get that growing from the very beginning of school um, and that kind of thing. So we've grown things, we do the bead um, seeds in the, in the necklace. I mean, we've done a lot of things. So um, are there other questions? Well, everyone's entering their questions. Uh, we are getting great feedback. And I think the best advice um, that, that you guys have shared and all of it's been great is don't get overwhelmed. Just start, start small, start with something that you know and build on that. And also, if, if people have questions throughout the year, feel free to reach out to us because if we, could, if we don't have an answer, we will find it for you. So we use the resources that are out there and we would be glad to help anybody that needs help. And I think too, I mean, it's just about experiences too. Um, JC and I were going to see my parents in Oklahoma City and on a whim, we were driving by Scissor Tail Park on Saturday and we pulled into the farmer's market. So don't be afraid just to get out. And if there's something there you like, ask them, you know, hey, can I grow this in my class? You know, and my daughter found this kiwi plant and they're like, um, grow kiwi. And they kind of laughed. Um, no, it's a tree. <laughs> it's going to be like five to eight feet tall. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask and, and, and just get out. And, um, um, you know, any of these ladies will help you. I ask questions all the time and they're good with resources. Um, my third graders wrote a letter to um, the State uh, Department of Tourism and they sent us maps and um, the, oh, the, I think the uh, jelly routes where you could go pick um, fruits and things. So just um, get out and ask and, and go on adventures and those kind of things. And when you have opportunities with Ag in the Classroom, take advantage, take advantage of them. Um, don't sell yourself short, uh, you know, like, oh, I don't know, or I don't think I can do that. Just um, give it a try because these ladies are all there for you and they'll help you along the way. And they've given me a ton of help, uh, you know, along the way. Another thing that I'm planning on utilizing this year, because I've been really fortunate that my um, administration has let us go on field trips a lot, but I know that that's going to be limited this year. Um, and so I really plan on using a lot of virtual field trips. And there's all kinds that you can do for agriculture, not just the museums, but there's like farms that you can visit and things like that. So just make sure and check those out too. We've also with the agriculture, that would probably be like one of our first things that we do in September. We've had um, farmers from our community come in and that was a huge success. We've had farmers um, and ranchers from our community come eat lunch with us. And then we played the um, Peterson brother videos while they were eating lunch. Now that's all gonna probably be different because of um, you know where we are now, but we could do some of that virtual, but it, um, and probably won't get to have visitors, but maybe you could um, you know visit them or maybe they'll record or do something. But we've invited a lot of people in uh, from our um, community as well um, and set that relationship up um, with that. And another little one, one, uh, other advice is get to know your ag teachers. Um, they are a good source. Um, get to know the officer team and get to know the um, other people that are in there. They will, they're more than willing and they're always looking for community service. The Peterson Brothers was a good suggestion too. Their videos are awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And the ladies are talking about the Accurate Ag Book Day. In this year, the Read and Accurate Ag Book official day, I think, is a Sunday. So last year, we just um, gave you the opportunity to participate on Friday or Monday 
Um, this year, we're going to open that up, I believe. So for all of you that are interested in that, we will be sending out more information. Um, it's going to look a little bit different this year so that we can make sure everyone can participate probably a lot more uh, over Zoom since uh, probably visitors won't be able to go in and read. And um, Emily and Melody and I will be able to join all of your classes through Zoom if you want that too, so that would be fun. Uh, we couldn't be everywhere last year, but um, this way we can be lots of places. So uh, I'm, I appreciate you guys bringing up that Read and Accurate Ag Book Day. And I was the lucky winner of the book, so I was so excited. So I have some new ones to include in my classroom this year. Yeah, so what Teresa is talking about is when you sign up to participate, then everyone will get um, entered into a random drawing and we'll um, draw for the name and then the classroom gets a free set of books. And we did a, a few different drawings last year. So different people won. So it's not just a one and done. Uh, you'll all have plenty of opportunities to win. So you wanna make sure and sign up for that one. The only other thing, um, Audrey, is you might wanna put it in your chat box. I see some links going across. Another thing that um, it's specifically for third graders, but the Bonnie Cabbage Program is another one and they that's free and it comes to your you know the plants are delivered to your class so you're not you know you don't have to do a whole lot with that so that's another one that we utilize every year is the bonnie cabbage program right and i'm not sure maybe melody or emily are gonna yep yep emily's <laughs> fast on that emily got me beat so the bonnie cabbage plants um if you guys have not heard about that for third graders they get a thousand dollars it's not a savings bond it's a thousand dollars so that's a great opportunity and then we get the opportunity to go and visit the schools uh, for the presentation, even though it's not Ag in the Classroom, the Bonnie Cabbage Plant Program is, has been great to involve us in the past. So that's always fun. Um, and it's fun in the summer. So sometimes I've seen pictures of people's cabbage growing. So make sure if your students, make sure if you participate in that, uh, that you get your students entered for that thousand dollars. Kim Nolte saying that she had a student win before and it was amazing. And I think so. what they're doing is because not every school was able to get their plants delivered. I think it's kind of like this year, go ahead and send it in, but it'll be combined with the next years, I think. Okay, good information.